Jim Beaver. <laughs> Jim's, Jim's hilarious. It's, he's, he's, he's like Richard. He has these comebacks that you'd swear he'd planned it all day, but he just th thinks it in the moment. They just come to him like, like, hey, Jim, uh, you know, how you doing? I'd be better if you weren't here. <laughs> well, he's in there, you know, he'll say like things that kind of cut you down. It was like, like I was, <laughs> I was playing guitar, <laughs> like just practicing guitar in the green room. He's like, you going to learn to play one day? <laughs> Right now, let's make him welcome here, Rob Benedict, ladies and gentlemen. What's up? Hi, everybody. Hi. This is, I love, I love the set. This is so cool. This is my favorite thing about MementoCon. Like, it, it really, what? There's a banjo. Because, you know, that banjo scene from the show, and uh, there's a globe. I love globes. I've got a globe at my house. Uh, play the globe. <laughs> I, could, I could try. Uh, TV is great. Um, anyway, happy to be here, everybody. And uh, thanks for coming. I'm glad that you're here, too. <sighs> um, so... Yeah, it's better with the glasses. I can't see so well. Um, all right, there are questions. If you have questions, please. So, absolutely love you and Billy together on Strange Times. Thank Any you. Any funny stories about filming, I don't know, filming that, but recording that? Um, he sent me, he said, uh, you know, he wanted help with the, the lyrics and... Um, and so I, and we, we ended up kind of writing the lyrics together. Um, and at first, when he first, he, you know, Billy's very, keeps everything sort of close to his chest. So I didn't even know it was for a solo album. I didn't know anything. I thought maybe it was for Loud and Swain. And so he was like, hey, what do you think of this song? I'm thinking it's about this. This is, these are kind of lyrics I have, but I'd love for you to take a run at it. So I did it and I felt really good about it. And I sent it back and I sang it for him, you know, and he's like, this is great. Thanks so much. And then, and then he eventually was like, hey, I want you to sing on it with me. And I was like, oh, it's your solo song. That's great. So yeah, then I, um, then I, I went into the recording studio and yeah, we just had fun with it. You know, it was just so fun um, to sort of, you know, sing back up on it and watch it bloom into what it is now. I loved hearing your giggle at the end. Yeah, that was that was real. Um, yeah, because they wanted me to go kind of crazy and uh, and do this stuff at the end, and we were just making each other laugh. It was awesome. You did great as always. Thank you. Thanks so much. Hi. Uh, oh, you're over here now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Um. So I really love the uh, Bachelor podcast that you're on. Oh, cool. Yeah. And um, so the last episode, your mom was on there. Yeah. And she was amazing. Wasn't she good? It was awesome. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, did we talk about how that happened? And also, yeah. would she maybe ever make another appearance or on another podcast, maybe? Yeah. So um, I do, I, it's, I know a comedian uh, who does a, a Bachelor podcast, a, a podcast where we talk about the reality show The Bachelor um, and The Bachelorette. Um, the bad news is that means I have to watch that show. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, I, I used to watch it. And so, now, you know, I continue to watch it. Really, now I watch it just for the podcast. Um, and it's ridiculous. And we still love getting, it's, it's all comedians. Uh, and it's just really fun. It's a fun, funny podcast. Uh, it's called Will You Accept This Rose? If you, you're looking for it. Anyway, so my mom was in town this past week. And so... My mom listens to the podcast, and so she's actually a really big fan of that podcast. And so she, I, I asked Arden, who hosts it, I said, could I bring my mom? She's like, yeah, totally. So my mom was on it, and she was hilarious. She was really funny. And what was, the funny part was she was just going to watch. So she's just kind of sitting there, and we all have microphones, you know. But she kind of forgot about the podcast part. Of she thought we were all having a conversation. So the entire podcast, she's talking, but she's not on mic. So she's like, yes, yes, I thought that too. Yeah, totally, yeah. That was <laughs> so you kind of hear her talking the whole thing. And then Arden was great about like bringing her into the conversation, and I'd go like this, reach <laughs> over so she could answer the question. But um, yeah, she really, she was really a home run. She really it was really funny. 
Um, there's, it, it gets kind of dirty. The comedians have filthy mouths. And so, yeah, there was this thing at the end, the really, the <laughs> tweet of the week. Yeah, it was like, I don't even know if I could say it, but there's, there was a tweet of the week. People send in t- funny tweets and then we read them on the air and like we vote on the winner, the funniest. And the final two that we were voting on, one was funny and the other one was really funny, but it, it was really nasty. It was like very sexual and kind of a nasty thing that like, you know, it had to do with something you never want your mom to even know about, right? It was about masturbation, right? You don't, don't talk about that with your mother. So there, Arden goes, all right, Viv, that's my mom's name, Viv, what was your favorite of the two? <laughs> she chose the masturbation one. <laughs> it was so funny. It was just really funny. She right away, she, you know, she thought about it. It's like, well, I'm going to have to go with, and she said that one, the masturbation one. And everybody was like, well, that's it. That's the winner. That's the winner. We're not even going to vote on it. Viv's, you know. So, yeah, she was really funny. So, and my siblings who never listen to the podcast and don't watch the show, um, listen to that and they were like, mom, you're famous. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have to bring, um, I think it would be the easiest thing to do. I should bring her on the, uh, the Kings of Con podcast yeah. that Richard and I do, you know, <laughs> it'd be fun to have her as a guest on that, but <laughs> I'm glad you listened. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So I was wondering if you had like unlimited time to expand your musical horizons, what genres would you explore into or what instruments would you pick up? Oh, awesome. Well, um, I I would love to play like, uh, like something that had a little more funk, you know what I mean? Something that like, um, you know, had to make you want to dance a little bit. Um, I think that would be cool. And whether or not that was like more like just EDM kind of thing or more like, you know, something real funky. Um, I think more of something funky would really be cool. I mean, I, I grew up listening to like Sly and the Family Stone, you know, I, the, and, and then in the eighties I listened to Prince a lot and I would love to make music like that. Um, you know, I think Beck has done a great job. Some of Beck's stuff is kind of gets, that's, you know, uh, gets like funky like that. I like, um. So anyway, so yeah, so I would like to do that. And then what I'd pick up, um, well, I mean, I play a little bit of piano, but I'd like to be better. Um, so I'd like to be better at piano. And, uh, you know, I never, you know, I, I've always really loved the drums, but I'm not that good at it. So I'd like to get better at that, you know. And you could say like, wow, Rob Bennett plays every instrument on this record. It's me on drums. It's me on bass. Me on piano. And we can make a video where they shoot me playing, you know, all the instruments. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I have two questions, if that's okay. Um, Of course. The first one is, are the station breaks going to have another album coming out soon? And when? And... My other one is, um, if there was a Rob Benedict action figure, what would your accessories be besides glasses? <laughs> okay, those are great questions. Um, so the first one, what was the first one? <laughs> About the station breaks? Yeah, so we are, um, yeah, so there's going to be another album. We just need to get it together. We, we've already recorded like the, the basics of like four new songs. So we just need to like get another six, um, or we'll just put out an EP with like four or five songs on it. So yeah, every time I'm with Jason and Billy, which is like every creation convention, we're always like, we got to do that, you guys. Yes, we do. We have to do that. And then we don't do it. So we just need to like get it together. And maybe it needs to be me to go like, guys, let's make this happen. Because we, we have the nuggets of these four songs. And um, so yeah, we just need to keep at it. So stand by. There will be another station breaks at some point. What Jason wanted to do, Jason wanted to, to re-release the first album and call it our greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, our, it's our only hits. Yeah. Um, anyway, then um, uh, he really wanted to do that too. And, and he was like, I really think we should do that. And I said, no. <laughs> That's No. But it's a funny thing. Um, and then the other thing is, um, what would my like my action figure be? What would the yeah. props be with it? Yeah. Um, well, you could have um, y- you could uh, you could have um, 
my guitar and a pick, a little teeny little pick, and um, that I'm always losing. <laughs> and you could have, you said the glasses, and maybe my laptop so I can do some writing, or a journal so I can write lyrics in the journal. That'd be good. Come with a co-action figure like Ruth. Ruth would be great. I was going to say, if I could have a little Ruth, that would be great. Just put it in your pocket. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe my action figure has an action figure of Ruth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then I give it in my pocket. <laughs> um, yeah, let's make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Hello. so two questions, but one's very short. First one, can you play that banjo? No. No, I wish I could. I really wish I could like pull it out and just go, bam, da, bam, da, bam, da, bam, da. but I, I really don't know how to play banjo. That would be another to answer the other person's question. I'd like to learn how to play the banjo because I really don't know how, and I'd like to. Cool. Sorry. And sorry to disappoint. But no, you're good. I, I think play Rich either. might play a little banjo. I'll ask him tomorrow. I think, it, I think in Nashville, that's like a necessity. Okay, so um, I also listen to Kings of Con, and I was listening to one of the most recent episodes where you're like, well, we can't really answer any questions about our project, so you should ask Rich about broccoli, so I did. Good. <laughs> and, and what did he say? He gave me an entire um, grilled broccolini recipe. Great. So, and Alex gave me a recipe, too. Oh, good. Mark Shepard was like, no. Wow. So. That's, well, that's on brand. So my question is, yeah. either does not have to be broccoli, but broccoli or otherwise, what would you add to this like random cookbook of people who randomly gave me recipes? So I feel like we need to stay with broccoli <laughs> and you can have a broccoli cookbook. Yes, right? I'll sell it. I like my broccoli with a little uh, almonds. Anybody do almonds yet? Nope. Sweet. So this is Rob Benning's broccoli and almonds. And I realize I don't know what I'm talking about. I just like it when I eat broccoli and almonds. But I think if you told me, I think what I'd do is I'd get a cookie sheet and I'd, and I'd, I'd get, I like broccolini too. It's easier to eat. And you put a bunch of broccolini there. You wash it first. And you put it on, drizzle it with olive oil, and then put it in the oven. Uh, I don't know. Let's go with 350. Let's say 375 for like... 15 minutes, and then you take it out, and then you put these like shaved almonds on top, and put it back in, let those toast for another 10, boom, and then you, that's your thing, that's your, yeah, maybe put a little salt on there, <laughs> a little salt, never hurt anybody, well, it actually does, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you shave the almonds, you don't yeah. like dice them or make them. Or yeah, you can them, buy you them, if you want to keep it easy, you can just buy them at the store already sort of shaved, you know what I mean? The little, you know, Liver. so they're almost like little chips. Yeah, slivered. Huh? I wasn't going to, I thought you were talking about like getting a little razor and shaving. No, 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 like they've, it's pre-shaved. <laughs> pre-shaved almonds, slivers? Slivers, yeah. Let's call them slivers, because that's what they are. <laughs> and so you got slivers on there, so yeah, that's it. It's broccoli, almond slivers, olive oil, salt, oven, 375, boom. You changed the temperature. <laughs> I went up to 375. Yeah. In rethinking, I thought 375 would toast it a little better. Cool, you'll have to keep an eye out on the Instagram DMs since I'll send you a picture of whatever this happens to be. Please, so. please do. I'm excited to see it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, so I also had two questions. Great. First one is like all-time favorite music, band, musician, whatever, and then current like super stuck on it fave. Okay, all-time favorite musician. Um, it's hard to pick because I like so many. Um, uh, I, gosh, man. Um, all time. All t well, the Beatles, man. I mean, the Beatles are like, just like, every song is like a classic song. And like, I, I just, I, I've never stopped my Beatles phase, you know? <laughs> like, um, and I just, I just, I just love I just love what they made in those t ten years they were together, um, and uh, there was magic in those songs. There's just something about those songs um, that you know they were so heavily influenced by other people, and they have influenced other people who've made some of their you know who've gone on to make incredible music. But there's some there's something real special about those songs, I think. And Mark Shepard would disagree with me because he's <laughs> like that. 
He likes, he loves to tell people that he's, that he hates the Beatles. But, um, I just love him. I just do. And I, I, it all, for me, it all comes back to the Beatles. Um, uh, that being said, um, uh, there have been some great cover songs of the Beatles songs too. Earth, Wind, and Fire does a song that I, at the time I thought it was an Earth, Wind, and Fire song, <laughs> but got to get you into my life. Yep. Um, great song. Anyway, so then uh, lately, um, um, I do these phases where like I'll I'll go back to a band I used to listen to all the time, and then like make a playlist, and I just made myself an REM playlist, and that was kind of fun. Um, but there's a band called Pine Grove that I really love a lot. And um, unfortunately, I think they just broke up, but um, they made four or five records. And they're from New Jersey. And um, this, the, the lead singer writes all the music, and he's just a great songwriter. And it makes me want to write music. I love Radiohead and, and this offshoot band called The Smile that Tommy York formed. Love, love, love. But like, I don't feel like I could even make that. The, that's why I love it so much. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just in a whole other atmosphere that I could never do. But Pine Grove makes me want to go write songs like Pine Grove and play them, you know? Um, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And then my second question is, oh, yeah. if you were going to get a tattoo, like at gunpoint, they're yeah. like, you have to. Right. That's what are you getting? Harsh. Um, <laughs> uh, I just feel like I mean, it could be voluntary. Right. No, you got a gun to my head, and um, <laughs> I, please just take my wallet and let me be. No, no, no it's got to uh, be a tattoo. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been thinking about it. And honestly, I would actually like it if I had the gun to my head scenario, because I need to just go through with it, you know? Um, anyway, so w there are two that I'm thinking of right now. One is, um, like, my, my heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I, so I got like an EKG, so I actually have a printout of my actual heartbeat, mm -hmm. and I like to get that line on, and it makes me feel like I'm alive, which I am and I'm thankful for. Um, okay. But I don't know, here I think, um, maybe. Um, and then the other is, my daughter and I said the other day that um, when she's old, and when she's like, uh, maybe after she turns 18 or something, uh, we'd like to get matching tattoos, and it would just be a little star. Because she loves stars. I like stars. I wrote a song for Ruth called Star. Um, so anyway, so we, and what we came up with is right behind our ear, little star. And the fact that Audrey, my daughter, wanted to do that with me just made me feel so, you know, filled with joy. So I was like, yeah. So I thought, okay, cool. Well, maybe Audrey will hold the gun to your head. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a very violent world we're living in. It doesn't um, have to be loaded, just, but yeah, you know. But yeah, totally, yeah. So uh, I'm excited to, to do that someday. Great. Yeah. Thanks. I really want to when they say so. You know what my... Uh, it's I, not as bad as you think it is. No, 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 no. It's not I'm scared or anything. The only thing I'm scared of is regretting it. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just scared of like, it's the permanence of it freaks me out. I mean, it sounds like you've thought it out. Uh, uh, since I was in my 20s. Like, honestly. <laughs> and my... My ex-wife, back in the day, was like, well, why don't you just decide what you want, want, put that idea away for a year, and if a year later you still want it, then you should get it. And I was like 24 at the time. And so I had this idea, and I, I, I put it away in a file folder, and then a year later I changed my mind. So she was right. You know, I changed my mind, so I wasn't ready to get that. So, But now I've been thinking this heartbeat thing for a long time, and then Audrey with the star, I think that could be cool too, so... So yeah, like um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan at his wedding, he had a t tattoo artist there, and, and him and J Jared and Jensen got matching tattoos. There were like four designs you could choose from. I think that's awesome. Like the, if it was something like that, I would, yes. A little bit drunk at a wedding, like, <laughs> I'll get that. <laughs> anyway. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you. thank you for your encouragement. Even though you had to go to violence. So. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Kira. Happy birthday, Kira. Who's Kira? Thank you. <laughs> That's me. Is it, are you Kira? Yeah, I'm, Happy I'm birthday. Kira. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'm keeping some trend up with the two questions. I promise they'll be short. Um, one, I wanted to know, have you ever, have you and Rich ever talked about doing an album together? No. Um, no. Uh, but I would. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to try to answer this. I don't know why I got to do this, but... <laughs> 
I don't know. I could have done this a different way, but this is what I went with. <laughs> um, yeah, we we we've never talked about that, but it'd be fun. What I'd love to do with Rich is like do like a comedy album. I think that Rich would, would be agree. awesome. And the Rich yeah. would yeah, Rich would agree with me. Like back in the day, we actually owned I owned comedy albums, and I've talked to him about it. He did too. Like Steve Mart would put albums out, and um, Robin Williams, Robin Williams, Cheech and Chong. Um, I also had the I had, had the Cheech and Chong. I had Steve Martin. I also had um, uh, the the guys, the Canadian, the Canadian uh, comedians, who, Bob, and Bob and Doug McKenzie. Yeah, I had that album too. So anyway, I think something like that. Even Tenacious D's album, which is hilarious. Is, well, I think it would sell really well. I thank feel. you, thank you. Um, but in the meantime, I, you know, I like writing music for him. So he's recording something new. He's putting a new album together, and I volunteered to write a new song. He didn't ask for it. He didn't ask for the last one, but I'm. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, and then the second question, I asked Rich and Tim, what is your favorite movie soundtrack? Ooh, that's a great question. Gosh, man. Um, well, like Saturday Night Fever is one of the best of all times. I really love that yeah. soundtrack, Bee Gees. Um, and um, so that was great. My sister had that album when I was a kid, and... So that brings back a lot of memories. Night Fever. It's a great song. Do you have a favorite score? Yes, favorite score. Um, I like, I love all the music that um, Christopher Nolan has in his movies. I love the scores in Christopher Nolan movies. And uh, specifically, um, uh, not Interstellar. Interstellar is great. But also, what's the one about the dream, about the dreaming? Inception. Oh, yes. Inception's uh, soundtrack is really terrific. I'll go with that. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, you are obviously phenomenally talented music-wise. Thank you. Um, Mark Shepard has, he's got that too. Richard, um, it just, it blows me away sometimes. And I, I want to know, how often do you find that in, in acting where several of the cast members have such a high level of musical ability and work well together musically? Yeah, I think it's rare. I, I think it's incredibly rare. I think, um, I th yeah, I mean, look, everything in this show that we're all in and the reason we're all here uh, is, is a, kind of a phenomenon to me, you know? Um, I don't remember ever being in a cast that had this many musicians uh, or people that were so talented and great singers. And, um, and yeah, and I think doing the Saturday Night Special has really given people uh, a courage to come try it out and um, finding out that they've got voices that maybe they didn't realize they had, you know? Um, and then Shepard obviously has been playing drums for a long time, um, and and Richard Spade's been playing in bands forever, um, so it gave them an outlet. To, you know, I remember Shepard's like, God, I hadn't played in years, and he because he played with us, and um, yeah. So I think it's a phenomenon. Every, everything with that show, it's just really, it's it's hard to describe to people who aren't in this family. Um, you know, everything that we have here, the the love we all feel, and how unique this really is. I think this uh, this this family we've all created together, meaning all of us. Um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty special, but yeah. I mean, and then of course, Jensen has an amazing voice. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is actually just a question about your show later. Um, are we going to get some of your own music as well as some... Uh, like classic covers or you know i don't i'm not great with covers I, I i some people just have like tons of covers they can just rip out like for me i like every time for the saturday night special when we do cover songs we've got to learn them on the spot you know um so i am playing one maybe one maybe two covers tonight that i've like picked out and have been working on the last couple of weeks that i'm going to play just songs i like um so yeah, you you get a couple covers, and then besides that, it'll be my my own solo music and a couple of Loudon Swain songs. But yeah, there'll be there'll be two. I usually when I play a solo show, I, I like to play at least one cover. Um, but I yeah, 
but uh, so yeah, hopefully that'll kind of satisfy that for you. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I always, I always regret it. Like around campfires, I'm the wrong person to have at a campfire because uh, I'm like, I could try one of my own. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, I'll play one. If there's time, I'll play two tonight. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it's gonna be really cool tonight. Those are that people that are coming to the show, it's um, uh, that that view up there is really special, and so I think it could be a really cool show if it's not drowned out by pink. But I'm told that it's not going to be a problem, so oh, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Hi. Hi. Um, so I just recently started getting into and playing the guitar, um, and I was just wondering, like, what made it easiest for you to learn and, like, any advice that you would give for someone who's starting, like, trying to start out? Um, you know what really helped me is playing with people that were better than me. Like, if you know one, anyone, if you come across anyone who's, like, a good guitar player, like, it's, it's you just can learn the tricks you know, because there, there are certain, for me, it just, I just, I, I learned by listening and watching and figuring it out. I took, a, I took lessons for maybe two or three months when I was like 12 or 13 years old. Um, but, I, you know, and I learned what the notes were and I learned a little bit about just music theory, but really I learned mostly just by playing with people. I guess I would say also, if you don't know anybody who's a better guitar player, then, um, you know, pick your favorite song and, and learn how to play that, you know, and, and it just takes a little bit of time. And then once, and then it's going to kind of click in one day and all of a sudden you play guitar, you know, but you just need to just keep practicing. It's like anything, riding a bike, you know, and then you're going to know at some point. But, um, but yeah, pick a song you like. And then on YouTube, there are a lot of tutorials from people teaching you how to play a certain song. Um, you know, pick one that has... It's pretty easy, you know, chord progression. And then, you know, you can learn that way, too. I do that with learning covers. I'll, I'll, if I don't have a lot of time, I'll just, like, look online and see, have someone ch show me what they're playing. I'm like, okay, got it. Um, anyway, so that helps, too. The Internet is great for that kind of thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Rob. Hello. First off, I'm really looking forward to tonight. Thank you. I know it's going to be a blast. Thank you. And going back to 1997, when Swain first started, <laughs> I know you with the different guitar players, and you always say that, you know, when Billy came along, that's when everything clicked. How has, between the four of you, how do you think, how has your music changed from 97 to 2023? Um, I think in 97... Um well, I mean, you know, I think our, our songwriting has improved. Um, I just think we, the things we were listening to have changed. And when we added Billy, we were capable of more things. Um, so that was when our songwriting started getting a little more complex because we could play more complex things uh, in that foursome. Um, and, you know, when we were, we, we made an album with our first guitar player, um, I'm proud of everything we've ever done. I really am. I go back and listen to him. Like, oh, this still sounds good. And then, uh, but then when he left the band and we were a three piece, we were really kind of going for more of a Green Day thing, a little more like garage rock. Is that how we describe it? You know. Uh, so we kind of went through that phase um, because I was the only guitar player. So it really was just like power chords and you know. Um, and then when Billy joined the group, I just think we we it. I could write things that were that were a little more complex because I knew Billy could play it. Um, you know, and then the, the other guys have gotten m more confident as songwriters and they've been contributing more. And I think that too, it just adds another flavor to the pot, you know? So, um, so yeah, I just think our songs have matured along with us. Well, on the last album, you know, I think everybody wrote a couple of songs for the last album. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Billy wrote a, Billy wrote maybe three, two or three, and Norton wrote two. Um, yeah, and they all, you know, it's our songwriting. It, like it used to be, I would write pretty much everything, and then I'd bring it in, and then as a band, we'd kind of hash it out. 
Um, but now cause we're kind of split up and Norton lives in Phoenix and, you know, they just, they'll send me ideas and I'll write a lyric to it. I'll write lyrics for it. And then we all kind of play it together. But, um, yeah, like Norton's songs, he would just send me, he just sent me just music and I wrote the, the melody and put weird words to it. And then Billy will send me something and it's Billy singing kind of nonsense words. So he's got a melody along with it. And so it's a bit more flushed out. And I just, I just need to fill in the, the, the actual words. And a lot of times Billy too will be like, I want this one to be about this. So I'll write it about that topic or how I interpret that topic. Um, so yeah, it's fun. You know, it's just so fun. And I, I feel like we've just gotten better at it. So it's, it's more fun and less like banging our head against the wall. You know, we used to fight and about decisions and, you know, yeah. where should the chorus come and things like that. But now it's, it, it's a little more freeing and, yeah. And congratulations on 100 SNSs. Thank you very much. That was there. That was a great concert. That was a really special one. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe it. The, the cake was real, right? Yeah. Cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They had this unbelievable, this cake that they made for us for the, our hundredth show we played for the Creation Con, the SNS uh, Saturday Night Special. And it was like a cake of all of our albums stacked on top of each other. Yeah, it was like the TV show, like, Is It Cake? It was like that, where it really looked, it looked real. But, like, we cut into it, and it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> we kept saying, like, in naming our albums and saying, like, I thought Sky Alive really tasted the best, you know. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. I hope one day we'll get Mark Shefford back at SNS. I think he's coming. I think it's, it's in the plan already. He's, he'll, he'll be at the next few, so he's, uh, we talked about it yesterday. It was always fun watching him and Steve. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. That was always fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the two drum sets. Yeah, we'll get him back. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. Hi. Hi. Um, so I asked Mark and Alex, but I'm a competitive ballroom dancer, and I'm always looking for song choices. So what song would you suggest I do a routine to? Does it have to, it has to be like a ballroom? No, I just did carry on my wayward son. So it can you did? do anything. Yeah. So you can ballroom dance to anything. Literally anything. Wow. Okay. Let's both the couch. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> I w Okay, I gotta stand up. <laughs> no, no, don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, okay. Ballroom dancing, is it kinda like this? Is my doing it right? Kind of. This is yeah. the waltz. That's, yeah. <laughs> There's a song by a band. Do you do waltz? Does that count? Yeah, I do everything. Okay. So there's a song by the band Cake, which I've been listening to, again, a band from the 90s I've been listening to again. And uh, there's a song by Cake um, called Sad Songs and Waltzes. And it's, uh, it's, the lyrics are really funny. It's like, Basically, he, he, he's saying, I want to write a song about you, how you broke my heart, and, but sad songs and waltzes aren't selling this year. Nice. And, uh, but the whole thing is, like, is to a waltz rhythm. Nice. So you could do that kind of thing. Okay. Right? I'm, I'm pretty good, right? <laughs> um, Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. So, cake, sad songs, and waltzes. Okay. I'd, I'd watch it. <laughs> Perfect. If I'd, I do it, I'll send you the video. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I fucking love the harmonica. Awesome. I saw a stage it. You played the fucking harmonica. I tried. You did? Will we ever get more harmonica? Yeah, I just need to practice more. I, got, I even got one of those things, yeah. like the Bob Dylan thing. And yeah, I just need to get, I need to get better at it. Yeah. But yeah, so once I get more confidence, I'll, I definitely want to bring that back. I'd love to add that element to the solo shows. Yes, I've waited years. Yeah, okay. I'll, that you're motivating me to, to get back on that horse. Right. And you know what I was thinking, though, what would be great is, you know what I'm talking about, the Bob Dylan thing? It's like that, right? It's like... Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'd love to have one of those kind of things for the kazoo. Because <laughs> I'm going to play medicated tonight, but I'd love to have a kazoo on the thing. It's like I'd like... So I got to work on that. I think I could make it on my own. Just make one of those. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yes. Thank you and practice. I look Thank forward you. to it. Okay, I will. Can you add kazoo to the list of things I need to learn? 
Hi. Hi. Um, you have done in the past, you do a great impression of Rich. It's like spot on. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, which if you want to do that, that'd be great. <laughs> but I was also wondering, is there anybody else, like somebody else that you feel like you do a great impression of that you could share with us, whether it's somebody from, you from know, the show or not, the show or, or somebody else you've worked with, or you just feel like you do a really good. Huh. Impression. Um, that's a great question. I, I used to do that a lot. Um, like imitations of, of people. Right. Um, let's see who, um, I'm trying to think. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> well, Ruth is just more her voice, which it's, it's just in my, in my head, Ruth's voice is just really high, which it's not. Oh, oh, no, no, Rob, no. Um, but, uh, no. But um, I like. I'm trying to think. Like Alex, Al Cal, is um, he always has a hat on, and he'd be like, ah, he had it. No, I can't do it. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Alex is like, wait, how's Alex sits like? What? No. No, 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 do do me. I, I, I want to see Rob do me. Uh, that, that's what he would say. But uh, who else is there? Well, there's Shepherd's really easy. No. <laughs> and Pellegrino's like really tall and menacing, but the sweetest guy. He's like, so he like walks through me. He's like, Hey, Rob, how you doing, man? Now, where are you in the world right now? I just got back from Paris. He's this real soft-spoken. He usually has a little dog in his hand. <laughs> hey, Rob. And then, of course, Rich, which now to me, the Rich imitation is just, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> he's always chewing gum, but he's actually never chewing gum, but in my imitation, he's always chewing gum. Um, and then, um, who else is in this crew? Um, I used to do a good Tim when he had the long hair um, and the eyebrow. The who? David. Oh, David. David. David's like. And he's always very like regal and like treats me like I'm like higher than him on the hierarchy, which I'm not. You know, he's like, oh, Mr. Benedict. Uh, <laughs> and uh, who else is Osric? Osric's like, hey, Rob. Oh, hey. And he's tricky because he comes all in all like, oh, I'm doing pretty good. How are things down in Los Angeles? But like, we, we all know that he can kill you with one move. Because <laughs> we've seen him take, I saw him take Jared, I saw it with my own eyes, I saw him take Jared down. And Jared went down hard and broke his shoulder. I don't know if you know that story. Um, but yeah, Osric and Jared, we were in Italy at a convention. This was like 10 years ago. And Jared uh, is a little tipsy, and he comes in the green room. <laughs> and I'm in there minding my own business. Osric's reading a book, and Jared's like, who wants to fight me? <laughs> Jared, who's like 7'2". Uh, and Osric goes, oh, I'll fight you. And I'm like, what the f Osric, no, you don't want this. And then I saw it in like three moves. He hopped on him like a howler monkey. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> and he took him down to his knees. And then Jared was like, Gah! and he broke his shoulder blade, went out of its socket. He was like, ah. And then we were like, Master Chow. <laughs> we're not worthy, Master Chow. Like the rest of the weekend, we're like, anything you want, Master Chow. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, geez. I think I broke, broke Jared's collarbone. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> So yeah, that really happened. Uh, so yeah, that's Osric. Um, then, uh, yeah, it was a great story. And it serves Jared right, because he's like, who wants to fight me? Uh, I'll fight you. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, Kim, Kim Rhodes, you know, that's, Oh, Rob, oh, oh, Rob, oh, geez, Rob, oh. 
I, I love you. Um, <laughs> hey, Rob. <laughs> what is she like? She's like, she's loud. I don't fucking care. That's Brianna. Oh, oh yeah, so she's got the Canadian. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, fucking try me, you know? <laughs> I'll fucking, I'll kill you with my hands, eh? Gil's funny. There are two sides to Gil. There's Gil McKinney, uh, just normal sober Gil, uh, who's like, oh, come on, guys. Oh, man, I don't know, man. But then when he gets drinks in him, he's like, hey, fellas. <laughs> he gets a little bit dirty. He's like, hey, guys, maybe we should go out tonight, really go out. I mean, go out, go dancing. It's like, no, Gil, calm the F down. <laughs> You're a married man, just calm down. I don't know, guys. I'm feeling it. But yeah, we always wrote his character on Kings of Khan was like, oh, gee shucks, you know. But then I wrote season two, I actually wrote an episode that we never made. But it was like, <laughs> Gil thinks he drinks alcohol. Um, he drinks a, a cocktail and he gets drunk and then he gets into uh, weird, <laughs> weird Gil. But then at the end of the episode, you find out that it actually was, um, it was not, there was no alcohol in the drink he, dr he drank. Oh my God. Um, anyway, so yeah. But I like the normal. Oh, come on now, guys. You know me. Um, he's a nice Texas boy. Um, Seb well, Sebastian. Oh, uh, Sebastian's crazy, a little bit French, a little bit English, right? So he's, but he's, uh, yeah, he's like, um, no, but you know, uh, it is, you know, it, uh, it is like his whole thing is like, um, I wrote his character in Kings of Khan. Um, he was like, oh, you know, th this reminds me of this uh, glass of Chablis that I had with the, the Queen of Spain. And then S Sebastian was like, and then the character always goes, no, but it is, you know, no, but I did, you know, I did do that, you know. And so in the, in the, when we were filming it, he was like, <laughs> Uh, no, but, but Rob, I, you know, I really did uh, have a, a glass of Chablis with the, the Queen of Spain. I really did, you know. And, and it, was, it was the weirdest sort of like, whoa, you just said the line, but you actually meant it. That really is you. Um, yeah, he's crazy. I saw him hump, hump a, uh, a monitor on stage, and we usually have monitors. To just to hump a monitor in the middle of a... But it was hilarious. He's really funny, but he, could, he would hump anything. He'd hump that table. <laughs> No, 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 but it did you know? I did you know? Was, was, um, and uh, yeah, he he hump anything, but um, but now, and then he now he's got this whole thing. He's like, oh, that was before Ali, which is his his wife Ali, which we always say Ali. You know when Ali, <laughs> Ali and I met. You know before Ali, I would hump the couch. Um, uh, who else is there? Matt Cohen. Matt Cohen's like, oh, you fucking, you're great. Look, Benedict. You, you, you and Rich both, man, you just, honestly, you, you, you're my idols. I look up to you so much, both of you. Um, and who else? M Misha, Misha's like, <laughs> how's Misha? Um, hello, Robert. Um, he's like, he's like, um, he always kind of looks to you like, that he's like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm okay. Uh, it's life's, life's crazy. How are, you, how are you? How are you? Oh man, that, oh that sounds like that. That kind of sucks. Oh man, I'm so sorry. Oh, he, he's the kindest person because like, he, no matter what shit he's going through, I'll be like, yeah, I broke my toe. Oh, you broke your toe? Oh man. Oh, Oh, come here, buddy. You know, he's like so nice. Uh, who's another one? Well, Jensen's like, you know, J Jensen, Rich does a good Jensen's like, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? Telling jokes? Are we doing jokes? <laughs> doing jokes? All right. He's always getting ready to do something that never happens. <laughs> Jared. Jared's like, uh... <laughs> I know it's 90 degrees in here, but I gotta, I have to wear this cap, you know, it's my hair. 
Yeah, exactly. And sweats so much. There's so much sweat coming off him. He's always talking to you and going like this. Yeah, ah, Benedict. He'll call me Benedict. Benedict, how you doing, man? How's, how are the kids, man? They good? Good, man, good. Yeah, and then you'll talk to you. Keep talking to me. And you're, he walks over, sprays himself, changes his shirt. Uh-huh. And then what do you, and then it's still sweaty. It's sweaty again. He just changed it. It's already <laughs> wet. And then it's more like this. Benedict, how you doing, man? I'm standing. I'm not even sitting. Benedict. <laughs> Talk to me. You good? <laughs> ah, it hurts my neck to talk to him. Oh my gosh. Uh, DJ? DJ? Huh? DJ, DJ is, uh, DJ's like, he's always, he has sunglasses on this morning. He had sunglasses in the green room, just sun, red sunglasses on. Uh, oh, hey man, how you doing? I, I had the best, oh, you know, y'all, y'all should try this bar. I mean, I went to this bar last night, and I met a guy named Jack, who's great, real nice guy. I met another guy named uh, Steve, and this girl named Trixie, and they were so nice. I went back to their house. <laughs> it, it'll meet people at a bar and then become, like, best friends. Oh, we, we, we had the craziest time. We stayed up all night long. And he'll just, he just, his story is a great story. He's just, I just love to hear him, but he talks. He doesn't move a ton. He's, he's, he's Southern, so it just... It's like he, he's going to break out of sweat if he moves too much. So he doesn't move too much. But I met this great family who stayed up all night long. And, um, and then the, I woke up in the morning and I walked outside and I met the, the mailman. And, I, and we did the drive together. <laughs> That's the nicest mailman. That's the nicest guys. Um, yeah. Billy. Billy. Um, <laughs> Billy's just always playing. He's always practicing, and he you know, looks at you with the guitar face, where he's not really listening to you because he's thinking about the chords, the notes he's playing. Uh huh. Um, yeah. My what? Jim. I thought you said your neighbor. Okay. <laughs> this is Mr. Thompson. Hello, Rob. Uh, Jim Beaver. Uh, Jim's, Jim's hilarious. It's, he's, he's, he's like Richard. He has these comebacks that you'd swear he'd planned it all day, but he just th thinks it in the moment. They just come to him like, like hey, Jim, uh, you know, how you doing? I'd be better if you weren't here. <laughs> well, he's in there, you know, he'll say like things that kind of cut you down. It was like, like I was, <laughs> I was playing guitar, <laughs> like just practicing guitar in the green room. He's like, you going to learn to play one day? <laughs> He's always, yeah, it's always like cuts like that, and then, but then he'll sit down and have a real, be real with you and be like, you know, how you doing, Rob? Uh, but he's, yeah, he's always got a hat on, too, that's bent like this, just so, but he's like Rich. He says he's quick. <laughs> Poor Oz just like, <laughs> you know, he's just, yeah, he's this robot, Mike. I mean, Poor Oz, like, he's, he really has a problem. Like, he can't. He's the sweetest man I know, sweetest man in my world, one of my best friends. But he, um, he really has a, he has a hard time uh, with reality, just communicating. Like, he, like, that's why he got the nickname. So, like, he, like he's, um, he got the nickname because he would send, he keeps sending us his location. Like, I am at a Starbucks. Like, okay, Mike. He pocket, he butt dials us all the time. You, hello? And it's like, <laughs> Mike, what's going on? And then, you know, so if we'll, <laughs> or we'll go, we're all voting whether or not to do something. And we'll go like, I say yes. And then, like, I'll, I'll be like, I say yes. And then Mike will write back, I say yes. Like, you just cut and paste my, copy and paste what I just said? Well, I am at a Starbucks. Okay, Mike. <laughs> Anyway, those are my invitations, you guys. Those are my invitations. Ah. That was a long-winded answer, but I hope I... <laughs> yes. Um, what was the first concert? Oh, don't want to cut in real quick. We have time for one more. So you're on the spot. Make it a good one. Oh, it's the last question. That up. How am I supposed it's to follow It's the last question. That was awesome. Um, what was the first concert that you ever saw, and what was your favorite concert that you've ever seen? Okay, first concert I ever saw was Rick Springfield. <laughs> it kind of like crazy coincidence that he wound up on the show, right? 
Um, I never got to work with him, and that was a bummer. But it was Rick Springfield and the band called The Motels opened for Rick. Yeah, it was, you know, in the 80s. Um, and it was awesome. The best concert I ever saw was uh, one time, wow, geez, there are a lot. I'll, I'll give you three. I was, um, I, I won tickets to this private Pearl Jam show, and they're like my fave. And I was in the front row at a, at a, uh, in a club, so it wasn't they playing a stadium, it was just a club uh, in LA. And I was right up front for the show. And it was just amazing, of course. And then um, I was, I mean, anytime you can be in the front and see these bands, it's the best. I had really good seats for Radiohead at the Hollywood Bowl, and I was right up front. And that was amazing. And then uh, lastly, I, I won tickets. I used to win things on the radio all the time. I'd like be the first to call in. I'd be like, have it on speed dial and I'd get in. Like I won twice in a row on the same tour. I won tickets to see Radiohead in the, on the radio. On, on the radio. And uh, anyway, this last one, I won tickets to see Jane's Addiction Woo! with Flea on bass. Nice. Mm play the Roxy, which is a small club. It was like to start off, they're just, sometimes they'll do that just to practice. I was, I was there for that. I was thought about it the other day. I was like, I was there for that show. That was amazing. Anyway, I love live music. It really inspires me, so. Thank you. Thank you. That was the last question. Hey, guys, I just want to say something real quick. Thank you so much for being here, and I love you so much, and um, Thank you for being allies and supporting the actors as we strike. It's not easy to do. Um, we don't, no one wants to strike. We, I, we all want to work. But it's really necessary. What we're fighting for right now is really important for us and what we do for a living. And really it affects actors like me, who I consider working class actors, you know. We're not celebrities really. I mean, you guys love the show that I was on. But like truly out there in, in the acting world, you know, we're just... We're getting by and, and hoping we make enough for health insurance next year. And, and that's a r reality. And so what we're fighting for right now matters a lot. So thank you for being patient. And thank you for being so supportive and loyal. And um, I just mean it when I say I love you a lot. So thank you. All right. Big hand for Rob Benedict. You watch that whole video. <laughs> Lucky you. You should subscribe to it or something. It makes you smart like me. So have fandom and follow your fun. Oh, and shut up and take my videos.